Today we're going to work on distance management. So we need to understand when we're in danger and when we're not in a street confrontation. So if we have a threatening person, when are we in danger of getting struck? How do we stay out of that range? And when are we safe and in close so that we can use our jiu-jitsu? Yes. So I have a couple guys here, crackheads we picked up in the parking lot. Actually, they're just friends of ours, but if I see a guy like this, I leave my car or I leave the go to my car. I'm in the parking garage. This guy's standing around. Obviously, he looks like uh, somebody I don't want to deal with. Then I need to make sure that I'm in the appropriate range to stay safe. So the first thing is we need to look at our distance. So if he's a hand's length away from me, I'm pretty much safe. Okay, if I can stay in this zone, there's nothing he can do that's not telegraphed. So if I can maintain this distance, I'm safe from strikes. I can see his hands as well, so if he goes for something in his pockets, I can respond accordingly. So I wanna maintain that until I decide whether or not I need to engage or I need to try to break away or I need to maybe possibly draw a weapon. So if we're here, he steps forward, I need to step back. I need to try to maintain this zone. So again, I see him come forward on me. I need to step back. And notice my footwork. Whenever we're moving in a specific direction, we're pushing off with the foot, and then we're, move, we're pushing off the front foot and move with the back foot. So we always want to move the foot in the direction that we're going. That, move, that foot moves first. So if I'm moving forward, I push off my rear foot backwards push off my, my lead foot so back and forth so that is our kind of out of range where we're staying out of range now if we want to force the issue or we feel like we need to attack this guy because he's a he's a potential threat we want to preemptively grab him we need to get through this range as as quick as possible so when we're in range if if I can touch him or almost touch him and his body's bladed, this is where people get knocked out. He can throw a big looping right hand, okay? He doesn't even have to be good at punching in order to hit me. So if I stay in this zone, then I better be throwing punches. I don't know how to throw punches. A lot of jiu-jitsu guys don't train strikes. We want to try to close that gap as soon as possible. So if I'm not moving back, I'm going to move inside the strikes. So if he steps forward, okay, and I'm not moving back, I'm going in. I'm going in for a clinch. So I'm just moving forward, grabbing my head's close, hugging tight, keeping here. Okay. He steps forward, right? I drop, I move in. There's a lot of different kinds of clinches that you can use. I could wrap over his arm. Not a big deal. Keep my head position here. What I'm trying to do is stay inside the effective range of his punches and tie him up. From there, I can use takedowns and use jiu-jitsu on him. So we're going to look at five different ways that we can close the distance, get out of that in range of punches, and move into the clinch range. So we're going to assume for some reason that I can't back up anymore. Maybe I'm in a closed space. Maybe I'm forced to engage. I know I can't turn my back on this guy. He's, he's being aggressive. So we're going to look at ways that we can deal with uh, a, an opponent who is about to strike us or, we, or is striking us. Now the first one is a level change. So I'm going to explain this first and then I'll, and I'll use our, our resident crackhead here to demo it on. So with a level change, we need to be in a decent stance here with our knees met. We can't be locked, can't be standing straight up like this. We want to be bladed. We have our hands up, right? Always having our hands up. The level change comes from the knees. I drop my level, I push off of the rear foot, I move forward, and I, and I grab in a body lock. So gable grip, hook grip, whatever, if the guy's bigger. And I'm going to suck him in. I'm going under the strike. Most shots are coming towards your head, so you're gonna, you're gonna assume that. So what I'm looking for is body language. That hand dropping, that, that body blading back. If I go in a little early on it, whatever. So I'm standing here, 
he, I can't move back any, any, any further. Okay, I have my hands up. He's in range. When he goes to punch, I see this. I'm dropping my level. Okay, I'm either going to be on the inside or maybe I'm going to be on the under, underside. I don't know. But I drop my level and I clinch. Keep my head in close, keeping him off balance. Okay. If he swings a little, little more over my head, I may end up behind him. I don't know. Either way, I'm just taking my head off of the target line so that I can get a clinch on. Uh -huh. Okay, another way we can get on the inside is by crashing the attack. So what I mean by this is we're going to use a shield, block our head, and get on the inside. So our head shield is going to basically look like this. I'm grabbing the back of my head, putting my chin down, pointing my elbows forward. Not like this, like this. That way I'm presenting him with my forehead and my elbows to potentially hit. And then I'm keeping my temples covered and I'm making a sort of helmet so that my brain doesn't smack off the inside of my skull. So the idea here is I'm just going straight into the attack. I don't even need the level change. So I see the attack coming. I drop, okay, and move straight in to crash. Keep my hands down and clinch. Right? Maybe over, maybe under. As long as I keep pressure, I'm good to go. You can start doing my jiu-jitsu. Alright, a third way we can do this is with a stomp. Okay, a stomp kick. The piso that uh, Hoist Gracie used to use all the time in the UFC, it doesn't work so well against trained fighters. You don't see it much anymore, but it's still a good technique against someone who isn't trained but is aggressive or standing too close to you. <clears throat> so he's in range, okay? The piso I can do it with my left leg or my right leg, whichever my preference is. What I'm doing is a stomp to his knee. So I'm just lifting my leg up high enough and then stomping forward on his knee. I'm either going to possibly, it's not going to, it's not going to take him out, most likely. It might knock him down. What I'm trying to do is distract him so that I can move in for the clinch. Okay, and even if I miss, right, even if I miss completely, if I follow the step to the inside, I end up close enough to clinch. Okay, so he's standing here, right, and I've got to close this distance. I stomp, I clinch. Okay. So from, from a distance, I bring my foot up, stomp, come inside. So this next one that we're going to do is a chin jab. This has been in every self-defense manual since the beginning of time. And the reason is because it works. The chin jab is basically like a punch, a lead hand strike. I'm just going straight out with my hand and I'm aiming for his chin. I want to try to stand him up. If I can stand him up, that puts him off his, on his heels, right? And if it's a straight line, it's going to be a looping punch. So if, if, he's, if he's dropping his hand, I can do this. It's kind of a, a, what Bruce Lee would refer to as a stop hit, right? So it kind of shuts down his attack. But I can use it preemptively in order to get inside. There's a lot of power behind this. If I hit him in the chin, that's great. If I hit him in the nose, that's fine. If I just hit him in the forehead, that's still going to stun him because I'm just using it to get in. This is not necessarily a fight ending strike. I come in, he's too close, bam, hit, and finish. Comes in, here, I finish. Okay, all I'm doing is putting this up as a, as a hard distractor. So this next one that we're going to do, we call it an improvised distraction. So most of the time when you're walking around, you're going to have something on your person. Okay, uh, you may have your keys in your hand. Let's say I'm going to my car and trying to get in my car. There's crackheads in the parking lot. I'm going to be carrying a briefcase, a backpack, a bottle of water, I don't know, a bottle of beer, whatever I have. So I'm going to use this to distract. Now people will typically, if you throw them something, will try to catch it, right? Well, at least if you toss it to them, especially on a high, high, high side towards their face, they're going to try to keep it from hitting them in the face. I just use that. All I need is a second. I'm like, hey, man, here's my keys. 
So the guy's coming up to me. I'm trying to get in my car. I'm like, hey, dude, you just take my keys. And I'm inside. All right, so anything I have on me, I can use, right? I just close that distance as soon as he catches them. All right, maybe he thinks I'm giving up. Now, you got some pretty good options, Dr. Jones. What are your closing thoughts? The key thing here is commitment, okay? Once we've made the decision to go in, we have to keep going in. Because if you go in halfway and come back out, you're going to get nailed. So once I've committed to making this clinch happen, I'm going to start driving him until we hit the ground or run him into the wall or a car, or basically I make sure that I get this clinch. There's nothing is going to stop me from going in unless there's a solid object or I, or I achieve that objective. So you can't do any half measures.